The ornate pipe organ, born in the 16th century, has been silent for more than a hundred years. It sleeps in the co-cathedral of St. John in Valletta, capital city of Malta, and home to the historic Knights of Malta. Over the centuries, the organ was damaged by vandalism and decay. It was ultimately abandoned and left a woodworm. A century later, after being packed by careful hands, it is sent on a daring journey to the north. Padua, Italy, that most modern of medieval cities. Inside the ancient walls, we find the town tribunal and the basilica of St. Anthony. Also in Padua is the key to the reawakening of the co-cathedral's historic organ. Fratelli Ruffatti, Ruffatti brothers, organ builders with a heritage that dates back to the 1500s and a speciality in restoring historic pipe organs. The executive coordinator of the Valletta Rehabilitation Project and experts from the Italian Ministry of Culture agree that the organ is in itself a monument. They consult Ruffatti about restoration possibilities. <laughs> State-of-the-art technology is combined with old-world techniques to bring about the rebirth of the oldest pipe organ in Malta. The first order of business is to halt the progress of the woodwork. To accomplish this, all of the existing wood is brought together and sealed in a thermoplastic envelope. The air is removed and replaced with ozone. It will remain in this computer-controlled and monitored environment for one month. After the wood comes out of its envelope, the extensive restoration process begins. As much of the original wood as possible is saved by patching it or marrying it to new wood. The many missing keys are replaced with new ones made of beech wood, the same material as the originals. The old and the new keys are placed in the key bed side by side. Three of the key covers are still intact. Analysis at the University of Padua shows they're made of elephant tusk. Covers of ivory are fashioned for the rest of the keys, and everything looks as it did originally. The eight-note pedal board, although not original, was added in the 17th century. Parts that have worn away are filled in, and it is restored with the rest of the instrument. Ruffati craftsmen use heavy-duty pliers to extract the long hand-forged nails from the tow board. They're stored in a grid to ensure that they are replaced in precisely the same holes from which they were taken. Over the centuries, pieces of wood have broken away or splintered from the tow board. The pieces are brushed with an organic hot glue typical of the period, and reattached. Smaller pieces are held in place by paper splints. The splints will be removed when the glue is dry. The chest is taken apart to reveal the pallets. These particular pallets are unusual in that they open sideways rather than being hinged from the back. The pallets are removed from the chest and placed in order. The 500-year-old leathers are replaced with new organically tanned leather, similar to that which was used in the original installation. New leather seals are cut for the pallet box. The edges are glued together and the small cones are placed over a mandrel where they're hand-sewn to reinforce the seal. The seals are put into place around the pallet wires.
the pallet wires will pull down the pallets, which will allow air into the tone channels. The pallets with their new leathers are re-glued into place, each one over the same opening from which it was removed. The leathers are groomed and adjusted to make sure the pallets seal tightly against the wind chest. When it's reassembled, the mechanism is tested to make sure that everything works properly. The metal pipes in the facade have survived, but their decay is extensive. Uneven edges of heavily corroded sections are cut cleanly away. Newly cast metal of the same alloy composition is prepared. Testing at the University of Bologna has determined the metal composition of these pipes to be mostly tin with a small percentage of lead and traces of copper. The newly cast metal pieces are placed under the missing areas and patches are traced, cut out, beveled and soldered into place. Small holes of decay are cut away with a knife and filled with solder. For this project, Fratelli Ruffati has developed a system for detecting micro holes not visible to the naked eye. Once they're found, they're carefully repaired. In the casting room, Ruffati pipe makers use a centuries old technique to cast a new alloy for the reconstruction of the missing internal pipes. Only one of the original internal pipes has survived, but it's enough to give us a clear idea of the composition and shape of the rest. Sizing of gum arabic has been applied to the sheets of metal. When soldering, the sizing will act as a non-stick surface, preventing the solder from flowing except where desired. The metal is measured and cut to the specific size for each replacement pipe resonator. In the pipe shop, the sheets are hand rolled and beaten into place over the appropriate pipe form. The shape is checked for symmetry. Then, a single seam of solder will join the edges into a cylinder. The pipe mouths are flattened and burnished by hand, and the resonators are set aside to await being joined to the pipe feet. The conical pipe feet have been painted with gum arabic in preparation for soldering. First the languids, adjustable metal plates which will separate the pipe feet from their resonators, must be created and set. Each is cut and shaped to the proper fit. The languids are beveled then soldered to the pipe feet, leaving a narrow, slotted opening at the pipe mouth. It's here, along with the upper lip on the pipe resonator, that the voicing of the pipe will take place. Resonators are painted with sizing, then soldered to the pipe feet. The soldering is a tricky business at any time, since the solder and the pipe metal have almost the same melting point. The bellows of the organ are truly archaic, in that they are made without ribs, using thick cow skins. The cow skin 
is in poor condition and must be patched. Rufati will repair and preserve the cowskin, but it will never be airtight. To make the bellows function, they build a reservoir within the reservoir. Goat skins are sorted through, and the best hides for the project are chosen. The lengthy process of lining the bellows begins. Large pieces of hide are joined together and attached to the framework. Smaller strips are cut, brushed with hot glue and meticulously pressed into place around the edges and joints to make sure that the seals are strong and airtight. This is the type of heavy-duty bellows that was used in medieval forges for creating the high temperatures needed to melt metals. It's interesting to see it used for the winding of a musical instrument. Finally, the reconstructed bellows stand again in their places. As has been the case with the wood, pipes and leather, there's patching and replacing to be done in the metal structure. Pieces which are broken off are fitted and welded back together. Using surviving parts as guidelines, new metal pieces are forged to replace those which are missing. The shaping and crafting is done by Rufati's master metalsmith. The rollers are part of the mechanical linkage between the key and the pipe. Most of them are missing, and as always, replacement parts are made from the same material as the originals. The tradition in Sicily, where the instrument was most likely built, was to make rollers of wood instead of metal. New rollers of spruce are shaped, fitted with roller arms, then pinned into place. Freedom of movement is essential. Some of the wooden end pieces are missing from the roller board that connects to the pedal pipes. New ones are carved, smoothed and drilled. The end pieces are hot glued into place. As on the main roller board, these rollers are pinned into the end pieces and tested for ease of movement. The rack board is made of leather and is as thick as the sole of a man's dress shoe. The holes are adjusted to make sure that each pipe has a comfortable fit. Finally, the last of the interior pipes on the main chest is set carefully into place. The main chest is brought together with the facade pipes, the keyboard and the pedals. The five high-pitched pipes of the restored Nightingale stop are adjusted in their pan of water. The co-principals of Fratelli Ruffati, Piero and Francesco Ruffati, compare notes on the progress. The ornate casework has been left in Malta for restoration. In the workshop, a temporary casework is fashioned so that the organ can be tested and have its initial voicing. It will be voiced again when it's reinstalled in the oratory of the Coe Cathedral. The wooden pipes are for the pedals. They're of chestnut and have a unique design. Each pipe mouth is carved completely from a single piece of wood. The stop levers are of iron and can only be accessed from the side of the organ. The restored bellows are operated by hand, as they would have been when the organ was new. 
The instrument can also be winded by a modern blower, in addition which allows us to have the best of both the old world and the new. The mechanism is tested again. Everything works perfectly and it's time to begin the process of voicing the pipes. Pipe voicing involves listening to the pipes and adjusting them to make sure they speak properly and at the right volume. The work is performed at the mouth of the pipe, the upper lip, the lower lip and the languid to bring about the right volume level and speech characteristics. What initially seemed impossible has been brought to a triumphant completion by the master craftsman at Fratelli Rufati. The organ has been truly restored to its original form and character. Restoration of any significant piece of history is always a love story. The patching, repairing and recreating have been done with great care and tenderness. As a result, the historic value of Malta's oldest pipe organ has increased a thousandfold. Here in the 21st century, we can see, play and hear what this instrument sounded like when it was new. An invaluable gift to the modern world. A paper fragment glued inside the wind chest shows part of a cross of Malta and the year 1579. Nearby is another, restored in the year 2005 by Fratelli Ruffati. A jewel is reborn.